Hey everyone. Hello everyone. Look at them all. Welcome to you all. Jonathan was here at 4.31 on the dot. <laughs> That's not really on the dot, is it? But anyway, Jonathan was here. Yes, half an hour. Amazing mm. stuff. Good morning, says Dallas. Yes, morning, afternoon, evening, maybe good night. Who knows? Thank you all for coming along, letting me know in the chat as well um, who, or not who, where you're tuning in from. I got distracted by my own voice there. And of course, um, <laughs> hello to all of you watching this in the future. Hello from the past. <laughs> Today, as you've probably seen, is all about the tricky parts of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to be going through all of JavaScript in an hour. Wow. <laughs> Flex out. Hello from Georgia. Hello. I think life is not long enough to go through all the JavaScript. Possibly not. No. Um, but we have prepared a few mm, common gotchas, I guess we'll say, mm. um, which often trip people up. But we don't have to stick to those topics, no. If you have a JS question that's been bugging you, let us know and we'll do our best. To yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting, yeah. Give them an answer. Awesome. I mean, even better, send the scrim to have a look. I don't think they can send links. Oh, no, yeah, that's true. No. That's true. Well, you can you can <laughs> type us the, what is it, the URL ending of the scrim. We'll find it. Yeah, like the hash in the end. Look at this. People from Egypt, Canada, mm -hmm. Canada, <laughs> Germany. Wow, very nice. India. Oh, someone from the UK. Hello. Hey. Fellow UK. <laughs> Great to see you all here. Ooh, Kansas City as well. Amazing. So let's get into it, Michael. Yes. Um, the first topic I had in mind was block scope. Mm. What's that? And why well, should I care? <laughs> I think we should probably kind of preface what we where what kind of prompted this whole um stream. Yep. Yeah. We so there is uh, a very nice course on Scrimba that is basically all about the tricky parts of JavaScript. Uh made by Zach. Uh and the course is really nice. Um I think like the course level intermediate, yeah, that's uh, that pretty much huh. Oh. Right on the spot. So it's like, you know, you've, you've already covered your uh, basic variables, functions, and stuff like that. So you're ready to na make kind of next step. So, you know, it's one of those courses when you're going through, for example, a boot camp or something, or you're going through uh, our career path and kind of think, ooh, I don't know, JavaScript doesn't quite hit the spot. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like I need a little bit more practice. I think this course will give just that extra practice. And, you know, if you're theoretically minded, you know, a little bit afraid that you're not quite understanding how things work. I think that will help you out to uh, cover the tricky parts. Yeah. And a lot of these, from what I've seen, are topics that you might get asked about in interviews. Like, Funnily enough, yes. <laughs> Funnily enough, yeah. Global like, and block scope. Function expressions, yeah. declarations. I don't know what this is. EFIs. Uh, <laughs> invoked functional expression. Oh, okay. We'll come to that shortly. Yeah, but that is actually quite useful. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I find myself using it a, a couple of times. Yes, Good a stuff. couple of times. Um, but the reason we wanted to do this on yeah. a live stream is so if you have any questions, you can drop them into the chat. Exactly. And, and we'll kind of just go through the main topics of the course. I just quickly summarize them uh, because obviously, you know, you, it's better if you watch the course, cover it yourself, play with the code, that kind of stuff. That's right. But there if something's go. sticking out and you're not mm. quite sure, yeah. um, let us know. Also, I think it would be nice to hear from a senior developer uh, how you would go about explaining these different uh, topics. Yeah, I would probably. Um, I'd probably go how I would answer them in an interview if I was interviewing for for a job or something. Yeah, that's that's probably how I would cover. Because you would have that sounds good. Yeah, you would have about twenty thirty seconds to answer the question. You know, it's usually a screening question. Although you know, there is a debate whether these kind of questions should even be asked. 
I would probably say no, but uh, you know, you're looking for a job, and people ask what they think they should ask, and yeah, sometimes we are where we are. Yeah, you yes. just sometimes you just don't care, and sometimes uh, yeah, there you go, just prepare for it. Term to half is asking, is this course available now? Yes, it is. Yes, here you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. So even though I personally think that you don't, it's kind of pointless to ask these questions in the interview. Uh, on the other hand, you know, having People the fact do, that, so. Yeah, the fact <laughs> that those questions are there, it's also a good opportunity for you to kind of uh, dive into some uh, interesting corners, uh, tricky parts, and, uh, yeah, just learn a little bit more about JavaScript because it's quite uh, fascinating. It's quite a fascinating language, actually. A lot of people like to complain about it, but actually it, it's got a nice place in my heart. Yeah, <laughs> I like good it. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually like the quirkiness and, like, you know, sometimes you just get things and you go huh, that is odd indeed. Uh, and, yeah, it gives it uh, some nice charm. Darren asks, is this a new course? It's not a new course. It's a bit of a secret course, actually. Yeah. Um, we don't really talk about it much, but I found it on my travels around doing some course maintenance, and I thought that would make a good live stream. So yes. that's where we are. <laughs> there you go. See, so it's Crimba. It's so, uh, there are so many nice courses uh, that you should definitely find some for yourself. Hidden gems. Yeah, hidden gems. No. And Hel has kindly reminded me of our weekly tradition. Oh, yeah. Well, it's more than weekly, actually. But anyway, well, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, that is, if you are new here, let us know by putting a bunny rabbit into the chat. If you've been before, hit me with that tiger. We don't use this information. Yeah. It's just for fun. Do you actually remember why it was a bunny rabbit and a tiger? I think we were wondering once. And I had to think of something on the fly, and just bunny rabbits and tigers were the thing that <laughs> came to mind when oh, right. it stuck. On some stream. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Wow. One day we might find the stream where this was born. Yes. I can already see some uh, JavaScript questions coming oh, nice. into the chat and cool. some bunnies and tigers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Which is good. But let's start by well, going back to yes. uh, the original topic. Um, first topic I suppose I had which was block scope but now yeah. I'm wondering if I should have started really with, with global scope um, <laughs> or doesn't yeah or kind of scope in general as Let well explain the both of them feel yeah. free to take the reins if you yeah I suppose like. uh it's kind of um, it's it's very nice that the course is also organized and kind of you know if you're not happy with what I said you can always just click into the the scrim and see for yourself but hmm. uh you know I think it's also quite nice that Zach starts with what is scope. Uh, there is like some, you know, some explanations and stuff. But generally, if you if you look at like a code file, and um, there is only one file, so you, yeah, you can you have to kind of consider that with many files, uh, you, occasionally when you hit some things, you will. Whoop. <laughs> Sorry, my desk is going down. Yeah. <laughs> Should That's figure nice. out how to lock that. <laughs> Whoops. No, that never happened before. Carry on. Yeah. So uh, sometimes you'll have to, it, it's quite useful to consider what scope actually is. So uh, obviously, you know, when you, when you look into the file, uh, everything that you can see in the file is called global scope. But when you have multiple files, them all in combination would be your global scope. It's kind of like all the JavaScript, all the code available everywhere across all the files. Oh, so really? It's, so it's like when, yeah, when the JavaScript runs, it loads files into memory, and that would be considered global scope. So pretty much everything that it loads, it's kind of there. Um, hmm. So, but when you have only one file, it's kind of everything that is written, uh, and that would be your global scope. And then your local scopes are usually the ones that are enclosed between uh, these curly braces. So you would see that, for example, for this one. Uh, you would have the scope in between the brackets. So function scope would be your local scope uh, or you know, block scope. Those are all the same thing, are they? Well, I call them local scope. I don't know why. Um, I wonder if I read it somewhere or it's just because I'm a bit awkward. Global and local. Yeah. Makes sense to me. But there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's kind of block scope. It's also you have block scope. It's called block because it doesn't just go for functions. It also goes for like if statements Literally, uh, so I tend to think them like code is written between mm. uh, the brackets. So if statements, switch statements, they have their own local scopes as well. So this well, is specific sorry, to variables, is it, or not? 
Uh, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of it's to all objects that can be in memory. So they could be stored in uh, in the variable. But for example, the function uh, that you declare over here, uh, it's not stored in a variable. It's is declared. So everything declared variables, functions, and so on, they would be either in your global scope or in some block scopes. And block scopes could be nested within each other. So sometimes it's also useful to consider. They're kind of like, you know, like Russian dolls in, in a way. So mm -hmm. it's like the outer one is the, you know, your global scope, everything outside the outer one. But then the more inner ones, they're only limited to the one that it's immediately in. So just to, um, I suppose, give this a very basic explanation, this one here would yeah. have its scoped within that function, right? So in so, any other function, you can So this is when, the, so yeah, this is when the quite tricky parts come in. So for example, uh, Zach has written this code, and you know, it's like for you, for all the viewers and stuff, uh, you might already know the answer, which is good. But if you don't, have a guess. So he has this function called add 20, uh, and it declares a variable inside of that function. So as I mentioned before, everything within this is called uh, local, sorry, block scope or local scope. Uh, and then it declares a variable inside of that block scope. And then it basically adds an argument and this declare a variable together. Uh, and then you're trying to console log. So for example, you can console log uh, add 20 to a num. So let's just quickly go for it. So have a quick guess, and maybe you can even write in the chat what do you think the answer is. Uh, do you think this could be 20, or is it undefined? Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Dave has had a guess. <laughs> yeah. And... Huh. Bigger killer. It's used for local scope as well. Good to know. Not as you. Ah, there you go. OK. Ah. So, and then we obviously say that, you know, there we are. So console log add 20. Uh, so obviously when you add here, you have reference add is not defined. Uh, so the first one you're calling the function and it's accessing it from within the function. The second one, it can't recognize it. Yeah, so function is declared on the topmost scope. So it would be in your global scope. Mm -hmm. And then you say add 20, so I call it then the variable is declared, but it's declared within these brackets. So it's l local or s blocked to this particular function and so on. Uh, but for example, you can uh, go, for example, the other way around. So you can say if our global equals 20. So I can just comment mm -hmm. that out. I think this will change things. And say global. All right. And you can see that the answer is still 120 because you can access from kind of, you can go from top, from outer in, but you can't go from inner out. And it's kind of useful when you need to have some variables conveniently are called globals. Uh, so they're like constants. For example, if you're writing some kind of physics application uh, like the gravity acceleration G, which is equal 9.8, uh, you would write that as a, you know, as your constant. So things that are unlikely to change. Or for example, if you're writing, I don't know, some kind of uh, uh, tax engine for UK and VAT is 20%, you can probably hard code that as well. So these are things um, which are okay to save in global variables. Yeah, basically. Right. But otherwise it's best to avoid it? Um, again, it all depends on your uh, yeah, on your use case, how, how you want to use it. So there you go. Uh, so block scope, global scope is basically all about, you know, are things publicly accessible for you to just come in and grab or are they kind of in their own little uh, blocks? Are they in their own little rooms uh, where you can have only access to that? And uh, obviously when you kind of understand scope, it helps a little bit better with uh, the concept is called encapsulation. So you're basically mm -hmm. trying to keep things organized uh, so functions deal with their own things and they're not polluting too much for other functions. So because if you have a lot of globals and functions start reusing them, there is a lot of dependencies and stuff. 
and you kind of end up with what people call spaghetti code. Uh, Sounds so, messy. Yeah, so what you want to do is like, you know, isolate things into nice little boxes so they can do their own things. One question, well, comment really from Carolina says, because we use VAR, and this reminded me of something I've heard about some of them. So there's VAR yes. constant let. Some of them yes. can be accessed globally or something. What am I trying to say here? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> if I go for cons, uh -huh. so I'll just. So this is also you Amar's also question. Get... Can you access let and const? I think is going to. Well, the, cover the, the same easiest thing. one is basically you know uh, scrim. Scrim is there. You know you can just play around with it. Uh, that's why the, this course is quite nice because you, when you have these questions. You know, it's right there, so you, you're free to experiment. Uh, so it's not really quite about uh, var const let. So when they are block scoped, they are block scoped. So they're not escaping that scope out. Uh, so the keyword weren't affected. Uh, really? Yeah, so you see let when you're trying to console log let. Still no. What about yeah. const? Still no. Yeah, I'll turn back to const. No, nope, still no. Oh. So it won't it won't escape into into that scope above. So what is this thing? I've definitely heard something like uh -huh. this. So uh, <laughs> we will, well, kind of. Uh, is var different from a letter at this point? Is var different from letter at this point? Well, on at this point, that's why people kind of say, you know, um, var is not actually that bad. You you can hear some people say that, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh oh. Yeah. Uh, in this in this case, it's. The raw, again, there are even deeper, trickier parts. Uh, but I would say for now, you know, they're not, they're not that different. So what's that, the answer then? I mean, it, it depends, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> that is such a cop out answer. <laughs> okay, but what is this thing that you are going to tell us about? Yeah, so how uh, so there we go. We covered block scope. We covered global scope. And uh, basically, I think what people normally mean is they mean hoisting. Oh. Yeah. One second. Adjusting this. Continue. Uh huh. So, oh yeah. Hoisting. What yeah. is hoisting? And uh, why should I care? Yeah. So, uh, luckily, Zang has already made a uh, little playground. So, let's have a look. So, there we go. So, when you have things in your global scope, and then you write sometimes. There's like var char, it would be undefined. And ah, there we go. So it's quite nice that. So you have. That's var because char. it's above it in the code, so it can't. Yeah, so basically you read, read from it. top to bottom, uh -huh. right? So you're trying to char, let, char, and then. Yeah. Uh, right, so, that, so now, this error I have seen many times throughout my yeah. coding career. <laughs> so see, what's quite what's quite interesting is that now you have that as undefined, right? So it has so, recognized that the variable has been created, oh. right? But if but you it have a can't let, read what's been assigned to it for some reason. Yes, because. Um, JavaScript doesn't want to shoot you too much in the foot. So when it says var, just a bit. <laughs> yeah, when it says var, what it does, it effectively does it like that. So it says var char, and then further down, it says, okay, well, you wanted this to be to console log it. I'm not going to mess it with it because it still matters that you're reading from top to bottom. But I am going to now assign that variable. So basically, all your declarations, like if you write, for example, um, Quite often, you could have seen something like function, um, you know, yeah, function at, you know, say, call it add to. It's a silly function name, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so you'd say add to, and then people say, like, turn, um, you know, x plus 2. So you can see, oftentimes, people, like, write a function at the bottom of the file. But then they say something like, at the top of the file, they say console.log uh, add two, they added to three. 
and then it gives you five. So why does it use it? How can it possibly use this function before it's actually written down? And that is because of hoisting. So hoisting basically takes all of these declarations and shoots them on top of your file so you can then use it before. So if you write code with modern linters and stuff, you would quite often, or for example in TypeScript, you'd quite often notice an error message saying you're using the function before it's actually declared. So a lot of linters force you to do this. So they want you to declare things before you use them. Even though you technically don't have to. Even though technically you don't have to, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, both let and const, they basically prevent, they, they basically stop the hoisting part. They basically say, uh, I'm not going to throw them to the top of the file for you, just so you don't, you know, just so you don't shoot yourself in the foot. So you don't have these tricky errors because people get, kind of get used to hoisting. Sometimes they're not quite, you know, there is certain behavior that they expect. Then they start using these. And then when some bugs appear that are due to hoisting, but people can't forget about it, it becomes a little bit tricky to, um, to debug it. Got it. Some so questions right. and comments um, from, well, on the topic of hoisting slash variables. Okay. Let's have a look. The difference is that var is function scoped and let and const block scoped. Yeah. What's the difference? So sometimes, well, like function scoped. Well, maybe it's the rest of the comment, which yeah. means you can access a var variable yeah. outside an if statement. And not a let or cons. There we go. Oh. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Um, so I think uh, probably, you know, obviously this this stream won't cover, and even this course won't really cover, uh, kind of both the stream and the course, well, mainly the course and then the stream. I'm here to kind of prompt your interest in this topic and say, uh, oh, actually, this is quite interesting. I wonder if I can dig more. How do I dig more into this? And I would probably say, uh, uh, what is it called? I think the free book is called You Don't Know JavaScript. Uh, you Don't Know JS. There you go. And it's basically on GitHub. Oh, there you go, second edition. So, and there, it's like, it goes pretty deep. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite nice. And there are like separate parts on scope, uh, on what scope leads to. Scope uses like closures, and closures are quite important. Uh, is that closures with a J? Or is that something else? Closure with a J, that's a programming language. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Well. So, uh, <laughs> but it's actually related to closure. <laughs> More uh, comments. If you use let in a function, you can use, you can use let to declare a variable with the same name yes. in a nested function. Yes. And it's a different variable. With var, it's the same variable, no matter how deeply nested. Yes. Oh. Assad okay. says, I hadn't seen variable declared with var for a long time. Isn't const and let the new thing? Um, yes, I think yes. haven't actually watched that script. It might just be for um, demonstration purposes only. But generally, yes. Um, yeah, you can, I mean, if you, if you know what you're doing, uh, you know, you can still continue using var. It's fine. Like, if you're using yeah. it in, in the block scope and stuff. You know, and you're just quickly reassigning it. Uh, you're not using it anywhere else. Yeah, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. You can access let and const if it's globally defined but can't re-declare it. Uh, so huh? const, you can't re-declare. That's right. But you can't re Well, you can't re-declare as can in... reassign. Is that something different? Yes. So, uh -huh. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, that's actually a good point. JavaScript only... Ha Hoist declarations, not initializations. So let's say uh, right, three. <laughs> then you can say var char equals five. And with both of these, with actually three and five, but you can see that you are actually redeclaring it. But if you say let abc equals abc. So if you did lines one and three with a cons, that would just say let no, wouldn't it? Whoops. Uh, and then 
said. Because <laughs> I leant on the table button again. Okay. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself here. Okay. Uh, so when you're trying to read Claire with a keyword again, it says, huh. has already been defined, has already been declared. There you go. So right, like, you. You, you, can't, you can't do that. Uh, so what you want to do is basically you want to explicitly say, okay, I want to reassign it. And now it works. And the const basically uh, you get whenever you're trying to try and to even do that, it just says assignment the const variable. So mm. you're not allowed to do that. I've seen that one many times as well. Yeah. There we go. In legacy code, I've seen a lot of art indeed. Why can't I find this course on Scrimba? Hmm. I'm not sure, but we'll put the link in the chat. Scrimba.com slash learn slash tricky JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go on to some more questions now. Quick fire. Attribute versus property. I think I can answer that. Cool. All right, Kiosu. Um, <laughs> in CSS, so if you want to um, go back to this one, well, I mean, I can actually. We have, so this is a sneak preview of what we're building on, Whoa. <laughs> on Friday's uh. live stream. The pumpkin grid, yes. Um, CSS, now let's get this the right way around. This <laughs> is the property, pretty sure. <laughs> this is the attribute. So it's the what you're setting and what you set it to, but now I think that might be wrong. TSS, property versus attribute. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, it's kind of... Oh, these are selectors. Huh. Okay, maybe it's actually nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of um, like, isn't that related to properties and attributes of HTML? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think you're right. So I think like attributes are like HTML properties, but when they're in JavaScript, to be fair, it's like, um, it's kind of like with methods and functions. Quite frankly, to be honest, in, in common language, there is no difference. People use them interchangeably. Uh, there you go. Maybe I'll learn something. Maybe you will. Maybe I will. Um, Attribute is the initial state when rendered in the DOM. Property is the current state. An element has attributes and properties. Hmm. Interesting. I'm, wondering, I'm not like, clear on what, what this of... actually means. <laughs> I'm wondering what kind of, uh, when would it be super useful to make sure that there is a very clear distinction? That is a good question. <laughs> but it's even, even the article says that attributes and properties are used interchangeably. Ah. So. Properties, all which either has a Boolean value or that is UA calculated, Ukraine calculated. I think that user agent. <laughs> okay, so broadly speaking, it seems they're um, interchangeable. I think so. I think so too. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. Christine asks, why can't you put emojis in let statements? Can't you? Can't you? I think you can. Testing live. Come on. <laughs> well, seems to work. Oh, I that? think, um, uh, who, who was that asking? Uh, Christine? Christine? I think maybe in that case, Christine, uh, if you were trying to use emoji without quotes, that's mm -hmm. probably why it didn't work. That's because great. emoji is a character and the character is, it needs to be in a string. Uh, it should be in, yeah, in this quotation mark like, to be rendered correctly. Could yeah. be that. So because emojis are not a uh, separate type, so it's not like a number or a Boolean. Mm. Although to be fair, uh, well, in JavaScript at least, anyway, it's not. Uh, so you need to use them in quotes. Giga Killer 
This keyword in arrow functions is a great question. I'm sure he will get to it once we hit arrow functions. <laughs> so uh, I guess Mohammed asked this question originally and I missed it. But thank you for yes. highlighting, Giga. And thank you for the question, Mohammed. So this keyword yes. in so, arrow functions. Arrow functions generally, I tend to not use. Um, so tell um, us about them. <laughs> right, so this is one of those where it's one of the topic, um, you know, where did we, we, we had those. So we had, it's kind of, you go through function declarations, expressions, oh. IFEs, and then arrow functions. And funnily enough, um, so this course, let's, let's actually go out. So the course actually covers it in a very nice structure manner as well. So it says function declarations, expressions, IFEs, arrow functions. So with the declarations, as you expect, you know, uh, let's just go to the middle. So there you go. When you say function, keyword function, that's when you declare it. So basically you create mm -hmm. it. You say, okay, I declare function, this is the name. Uh, and then you go, you can just use it straight away. So expression is now becomes, so let me just uh, go to the next. So expression, uh, just to pick. So expression could be like when you say something like that without function name, and then you assign it to a variable. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, uh, that would be called an expression. There is, oftentimes people don't really make that much of a distinction, or they don't want to highlight a distinction between declaration and expression. Uh, but it's kind of, think about it, that when you use, uh, when you declare a function, you just create it with a name and it's for reusing piece of functionality. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to use that function as just one of the variables or just as a piece of code that you want to invoke again and again, that's when it becomes an expression. That's probably, maybe I, I, maybe I try to simplify it a bit too much, but let's, let's see on this one. So you have, uh, like that created a timing function, which is actually quite a, quite a common pattern. Like people do use create scripts like that to just measure how quickly something runs. Uh, and then basically you create, uh, there is performance, that's a global variable. Uh, you say performance.now, uh, end time, and then you subscribe uh, one from the other, and then you get how long a function took to run. So basically the function is finished before it just loops uh, was it 100,000 times, you know, one by one. How long did it take? There you go, it's half a second, 0 0.7, 1, 0 0.5. So you can see that actually they vary quite a bit. Hmm. Uh, so where is this performance actually declared then? Uh, that's just available in your browser. Oh, it's built into yeah, yeah, yeah. into JS? It, yeah, okay. it, it's kind of a feature of a language. Um, yeah, so, and you can see that this FN when it's actually called, it's used as an argument. So, um, kind of a word, a term for that sometimes is used callback. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. what you're doing basically, you say, I pass this function, so this will be a callback, but this will be an argument that you can call. So, that, that is a very common pattern when you say, I have a function and I want to pass another function as an argument. But when they say, I want to pass another function, they mean, I want to pass another function expression. So that's kind of what you have to do. Uh, and then you can assign this function expression. The, the beauty of a function expression is that you can assign it to a variable and you can pass it all around. While with uh, function declaration, you kind of create it uh, and then you can invoke it. But with the expression, you can do both. Uh, and so how got... does this tie into Muhammad's question about this? Right, so again, it, it's a very long part. So once you've distinguished <laughs> between declaration and expression, uh, like the next step up from the expression uh, is to then say, uh, you know, you can immediately invoke an expression. So for example, um, well, let me just, it's quite lucky that there is a course that can be used uh, as an expression. Oh. So, for example, Bob Cyril popped in. Hello, Bob. 
Hey. <laughs> so, for example, um, here he calculates Fibonacci number and uh, just quickly preview uh, caveat. Fibonacci number is like, what is it? One plus one. So one, one, mm. three, five. It's like a natural sequence, uh, quite common. Uh, basically, uh, it's quite a nice way uh, to quickly calculate Fibonacci, uh, like nth Fibonacci number. Uh, but this way is used recursively. So you basically call itself uh, to resolve something. But quite frankly, like it, it doesn't matter what this actual function does. It could do anything. It can like, calculate all the money in the world. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so once you have that function, you can then say, uh, here's me trying to so like I, I have written this functional expression so like that. And what you can see is like there is this syntax where it's like you say some expression. So the the kind of round break, uh, breaks is the mean expression. Mm -hmm. And then the second is usually here is an argument to that expression. So when you say when you declare an expression, Inside of it, there is a function expression. You pass an argument to it. So you immediately then call it to run. Uh, you can easily, instead of doing that, you can assign it to a variable. And then you can say uh, 10 fib and, and then, well, you need to to log. There we go. Here's here's a number. So you can easily do that. Uh, but what immediately invoke functional expression allows you to do is then you can go to the next step and you say that actually what I want to do is I can create a function that uh, kind of like takes arguments, runs my expressions with those arguments, and returns you an answer. It's kind of like delves even deeper. Uh, so then you can return like reuse the same piece of code multiple times instead of recalling it again and again. So it's like it it, it adds you another layer of reusability. Yeah. Right, and arrow functions are ba well now there we go. So arrow functions are basically uh, functional expressions but in a more concise syntax with some quirks. <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah, of course. So when I say with some quirks, you can, for example, uh, so for, uh, what is it? like keyword this is not available. So you see. It's not available. Actually, it's not defined in, in this functional expression either. Uh, Oops. Hmm, interesting. It's not defined in this either. Johannes asks, so it's oh. best to use expression than declaration. Brackets industry standard pattern. Uh, I, again, it, it really depends where you're trying to, where you're trying to use this. Like if you're trying to, like you can't use declaration for this kind of reusability, um, hmm. just because that's that's how the language works. You know, these expressions are used so you can throw functions around and uh, you know pass them on as arguments. Um, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Depends on the use pattern. case. Amar says, yeah. "Call a function inside a function. What is that?" <laughs> yes. Well. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but what's quite nice is like um, you kind of keep those things to itself. So you can, for example, just declare variables within this function. And then you can, you know, maybe like you can declare a variable uh, like var uh, some. So, 
<laughs> Far constant. <laughs> I, I probably, no, I probably... Uh, <laughs> Uh, rather, rather even no, better. That, that's better. That's better. Yeah. You can you can use like uh, some variables, and you can use it further in your function and stuff. But at the same time, uh, when you come back to your global scope, uh, it's all scoped in. You know, you are not reusing. Uh, you can't access those uh, variables, so it kind of like keeps things neat and tidy. Good. Michael Ember says. I'm trying to think of a real world use case for immediately invoked function expressions. I've been doing web dev type work for a while now and I've never said now is the time for IIFEs. Yes, well, uh, if you um, create, well, so if you create a simple JavaScript and the HTML file and within that JavaScript file, you need to call an API you will need to async, you will need to async await. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen is it's going to tell you that, well, just, just try to do it, you know, just create an HTML file and try to call an API with JavaScript. Uh, you will see that for some reason it won't work with async await. And the answer to that would be immediately evoke function expression. So I'm just going to say no more to Michael Lim, but, uh, you know, you, you'll have to try it for yourself. So what happens with the async await? So if you want to just write, so if you want to call uh, something like, <laughs> you can just do it with caps lock. Sorry. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, that, Keyboard that's switching to Cyrillic. Yeah. Mind us. So uh, if you want to call like fetch, you know, some API. Uh, and you want to say, like, I want to await the result into it. Mm -hmm. So if you use the await, you need, uh, yeah, you need, you need it to be in async. Mm -hmm. Yes. But where do you write this async? So what you do is you basically need to create, like, a uh, was it like a whole, sink? The whole async await shebang. Yeah, so... But you're saying with immediately invoked function expressions. Yeah. Like that, and then like that. There you go. So that is effectively declaring... Do you remember how we said, here is an expression. Whoops. Like that. So here's an expression. Ah. By that. Ex expression goes here, mm -hmm. and then you call it. And because inside of an expression is an async arrow function, inside of which you can call await. So that would be that would be like one of the primary use cases for um, immediately invoked function expression, and the, like lots more. Sometimes, like you know, as soon as the code loads, you need it. You need something to run. You can use IFE, uh, so you don't mm -hmm. have to call the thing itself. Michael Imber says, "Thank you. I will give that a try." There we go. I can see it now. You can't just make a block of code async. It has to be in a function. Thus, immediately invoked function expressions is a workaround. Uh, yeah, there you go. I quite like that you called it a workaround because it kind of is. Uh, the actual solution is called top level uh, async. Well, top level await. Hmm. So Basically, instead, of, instead of writing all of this, you can just do this. Um, that looks good. Yeah, that, and uh, you know, <laughs> some some versions of like uh, Node and uh, like it does work somewhere, like in in certain parts. So going um, back, you kind of need to transpile it and the rest of it. This Giga Kilo Eleven says so. Basically, it's a dummy function to tell JS, hey, treat as fetch, no, treat fetch as an async function. Well, fetch is async. It's a very good example. Yeah. So. You, Oh. You have to you have to use it with an await uh, because then your code kind of runs away uh, and you don't really get the output of your of your fetch if you don't await it. Or well, you you can say then 
uh, you know, uh, basically dog venable. Um, but I think you, you should use a sink away. It's kind of the most useful pattern right now. Top level of weight was introduced in ES 2022. We can actually no longer need IIFEs. There you go. I'm glad, I'm glad that someone commented this before I said it, but uh, I only saw this comment now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good chat. There that we go. good news. Yes. But I guess the problem is that maybe not everyone's adopted ES 2022 yet, so um, you can't guarantee that that's going to work. Well, sometimes, quite frankly, like if you, if you just write a simple HTML and a simple JavaScript file, um, you know, you don't have any fancy um, build pipeline or anything. You just want to write the code. Um, yeah, you can just use this. View, says Dave, uses magic and trickery to allow top level away in its script setup section. Yes. So a lot of frameworks uh, now have solved this problem for you. So you can just use top level away. Yeah, so you don't have to use this function expression. But if you're just writing vanilla HTML JS, you'll have to do it. Good. Um, going back to hoisting, which is when you might write a function further in the code than when you call it, but JS can still use it because it hoists it to the top, basically. Yeah. Um, GigaKiller is asking, does hoisting add any performance overhead? Um, no, because JavaScript will always hoist stuff. That's that's just how JavaScript works. Oh. Yeah, it's it's kind of like you know, does breathing add you uh, performance overhead? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can't not do it. So it does add performance overhead because you have to spend your time breathing. Uh, but at the same time, does it really count as performance <laughs> overhead because you kind of have to do it anyway? It's gonna happen anyway. Yeah. yeah. So compared to robots, it does, but to people, it doesn't. Uh, so it's the, it's the same with JavaScript. It's kind of like for JavaScript itself, no, it doesn't. Compared with other languages, uh, yeah, sure. But <laughs> other languages are faster than JavaScript anyway. <laughs> well, so, some of them are slower. Uh, good question. And I was asking, um, does this course cover object-oriented programming? I don't think no, it does. No, I don't think so. It, I think it's just like a nice collection of like uh, very quick interview questions. <laughs> that is... George is also asking, uh, what concepts of JavaScript object-oriented programming can assist us with our code? So can you tell us what OOP, object-oriented programming, actually is? I've always struggled to Oof. understand this concept. So with JavaScript, it's actually <laughs> quite tricky to use OOP as a concept because JavaScript is, uh, JavaScript is, the kind of clues in the name is scripting language. It was kind of designed like that. It was kind of like, um, you know, without trying to get too deep into the weeds, JavaScript is kind of <laughs> a mishmash of different things, of different paradigms. So you can use uh, object oriented functional programming, scripting, all within JavaScript, but other languages are a little bit more forceful of. Uh, making you use uh, some paradigm over, over the other. So, like, for example, if you really want to look into what is possible with OOP, I'll probably suggest looking at something like C-sharp uh, and, like, functional languages. Um, probably wouldn't recommend Haskell because that's just uh, headachey to read. But, yeah, sure, why not? Give, give Haskell a go or Clojure or actually Elixir is probably the most user kind of... It, beginner friendly functional language. Uh, but no, it's all about um, kind of how you approach. So scripting language is usually like your bash script. Uh, so you say uh, do X, do Y, do Z. So you go step by step. Uh, functions are more like um, here is a piece of functionality that needs to be performed and they're kind of chained on top of another. And uh, mm -hmm. with the OP, you know, it's kind of like those silly examples, but really, you know, uh, if you want to break down a relatively complex topic, like, you know, all of these examples, like when people say const, like dog equals, I don't know, uh, an object. Name, facility, like, age, six. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, like that, <laughs> a, age, 
yeah, six, something like that kind of stuff. And then you can say like, um, voice, you know. Back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wolf. Right. So, but actually, that's not. That could be a function expression. There you go. Turn. Woof. Right, and then you could say something like console dot log dog dot voice. Woof. So what's this then? So this kind of pattern is like um, object oriented programming. Oh, so you basically so create the, you basically create yeah. objects and then you add them functionality on these objects and when you need to do things you create objects and then you use that functionality on them. Uh, but it has its drawbacks. Um, but <laughs> I'm afraid I can't even do it justice like in in thirty uh, seconds or a minute or even an hour. Uh, but also <laughs> the the problem is that JavaScript is just such. An, an odd language, it's such an oddity in general, and it supports all of these paradigms, but at the same time, none of them are supported in like their pure form that you read when you go to Wikipedia or something to read what is OOP. And it gives you an example, and you go, okay, how do I do that in JavaScript? And actually, it's something in between. Um, so I would say, like, explore these paradigms through. Uh, languages that are a bit more targeting those. So, like, I mean, C sharp Java for OOP would be, yeah, would be quite neat. That was it. Um, I wanted to demonstrate hoisting again because um, I've now lost the comment, but someone was asking for an example. Okay. Let's do it. I mean, that was actually that was a good example. <laughs> was it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But yeah, you... no, it is. I just didn't see the space. So we have this function square number, yeah. which is declared after this console log, which yeah. just calls it. Yeah. But it still works because JavaScript kind of automatically moves it, all function declarations to the top. Yeah. It but use then... it use all declarations to the top. That, that's basically what hoisting does. Whatever you declare. It just throws it to the top for you. It doesn't do it doesn't do any assigning. It just does the declaration. But because this is oh, a function right, declaration, yeah. it works. Got it. But then name is asking, why would any same person declare anything at the end of the file and let it hoist? So because they're saying, why would you do this? That's because nice. that's I don't know. I feel like that's cleaner. You know, it's like when you go to a file and you want to see, you know, I just want to do things, right? At the top of the file, so it's like, what does the what does this file do? I want to see what it does at the top of the file. So I look at the top, and then whatever it declares and the rest of it, like those are the details that I might not be interested, in, and they're further down the file. Mm -hmm. So it is. Yeah, Good could be could question. be useful. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Um. Can you explain? Says Muhammad. Um, not defined and undefined. They are different, right? Uh, well, mm, not defined is more like... Is that when you, like get, you get an error right. message that says var variable is not defined? Ah, so when you say, for example... Ah, var, and then undefined is when... Var variable. Yeah, okay. So now it is declared but not defined. If you can't still log that now, it'll say undefined, I think. Yeah. That's basically what happens when you uh, host yeah. things. Console.log variable. So this is undefined. Yeah. But now if you delete line one, I think it will say that's not defined. Yeah, so not defined is this. It's empty space. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. Undefined is you have the right. variable, but nothing's been assigned to it, I think. Yes. Anok says, can you explain in layman terms function bind, function call? 
I get confused. Oh my word! Uh, I actually get confused myself. <laughs> Not gonna lie,、uh, I get confused about it as well, which is why I use arrow functions because they bind and call for me.、Uh, I do like this JavaScript、really? syntax. Yeah, sometimes you just sometimes you just kind of get used to things, and you just go,、uh, you know what? I don't understand this, and I don't have any time to actually understand this, so I'm just gonna ignore it. Until <laughs>、yes. somebody asks me about it on the stream, and then I'll have to be like, well, this was a bit embarrassing. So, what, what actually, what actually is it? So yeah, I'm sorry to admit it, but I am not hundred percent on what bind and call actually does. So I think it's fine. I kind of know that it will effectively what it's trying to do is like you attach some function to another class and you kind of like bring it into another scope of an object to attach it to this keyword. Sorry, this is in like the the actual instance of some object, and that's what bind does. I think. Uh, not hundred percent on the call. I'm going back to this. Not defined and undefined. Dave says,、uh, "Not defined is when a variable is uninitialized." Yeah, so not there at all, really. And、uh, undefined is when a variable is defined as undefined. Ah,、uh, I mean,、uh, it could be that. <laughs> you can also do that, yes, but I would say don't.、Uh, yes. I, I would say that. Uh, Or it, when it's just far. Yeah, I, I would say that if you need to be very explicit that something is nothing, you should say no.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh, Rodelic Rick says, "Why use far in 2022?"、Uh, you fancy it to make an example. <laughs> uh, yeah, to make an example, and again, like you know, if you understand the scope and you understand the drawbacks that VAR is causing,、uh, and you kind of consider it,、um, yeah, there's nothing wrong about using it. You know, it's like kind of like with anything, like you, you know, you you can get power tools or something, and some people would go like, why would you? I don't know, why would you use some kind of power tool? Just you know, hire a builder. Uh, but if you are a builder, <laughs> you know, if you are a builder,、uh, then there's nothing wrong about using those tools, or you know, you just fancy using those tools, so there's nothing wrong with it either. Yeah, or you can. Or says,、um, not this one. Oh, here, I want to program. Yes, good. I hope.、Um, awesome. Oh, I'm copying it to the wrong place. <laughs> I hope then you'll check out Scrimda for all your programming needs. Beautiful! Wow, that was a whistle stop tour of all the amazing、yes. things.、Um, well, not all of them. Many amazing things. Yeah, we haven't even covered all the topics. See, JavaScript tricky parts are very yeah, interesting. It is. But thank you for coming along and、um, clarifying, I guess. And thank you all, people in the chat, for、yes. your thought provoking questions. Next week will be an interesting live stream because. I'm、going to be joined by no fewer than three successful、wow. Scrimba students who have landed jobs. Yes, we have Sylvia and James and Inesa,、mm. and they're going to be talking about their journey into coding, their job hunt tips, and all sorts of、oh, interesting、nice. things like that. So, hope you can join us then.、Um, Don't forget to hit the old subscribe button. You might get a little notification, or at least more chance of seeing it.、Yes. And if you enjoyed this stream, you might like to see us again on Friday, because we're discovering CSS Grid. Way, <laughs> and we're going to be building the Pumpkin Grid. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that, indeed.、Ah. And. In the meantime, don't forget to check out Scrimba's front-end developer career path that aims to teach you everything you need to know to get hired as a front-end dev. <laughs> I love that Michael Lima question. Is Michael deliberately mispronouncing paradigm? <laughs> yes. Who knows? We'll leave、yes. it up to you to decide. <laughs> paradigm. <laughs> Any closing thoughts, Michael? <laughs> 
Uh, I have a nice. Oh no no no! It's only Wednesday. You can't have a nice weekend yet. Not yet. Ah, uh, you have a nice Wednesday. Oh no! Unless it's already have Thursday. the nice rest of the week. Then. Uh, Enjoy the yeah. rest of your week. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you for coming <laughs> along <laughs> and making our live streams <laughs> lots of fun and bringing thought provoking questions. See you later. See you next time, everyone.